Hey everyone, welcome back to Topher Drives, where today we are embarking on a road trip in the 2023 Lexus IS 500. I was laying in bed the other day and I got an email from Lexus saying, hey, do you wanna go down to mid Ohio and drive some of our performance cars on track this weekend? And I said, of course I do. And they said, great. Here's an IS500 for you to drive down there. So I figured I would take you all along with me to see what it's like to road trip one of these cars. Now, this is very ideal for this car because this is the highest performance IS. Under the hood, we have a five liter naturally aspirated V8 with 472 horsepower and just under 400 pound feet of torque. I wanna say it's 395 and even though this is the highest performance IS, it still isn't a full F. They call this the IS500 F Sport Performance. They haven't gone full F with this car. It retains a little bit of comfort and a little bit of masonry, as Top Gear would say. <laughs> Anyways, it is still a full-fledged Lexus. And what I like about this car is it's very understated. You don't really look at this and think that it's anything crazy. Of course, it's beautiful as any new Lexus IS is, but the only things that really tell you that this is an IS 500 are the quad exhaust tips, which is signature Lexus V8. I think those look excellent. Also these unique optional BBS wheels. These are like a $2,000 option. And most importantly, this unique hood, which bulges and gives us room for the five liter V8. I just think it's the coolest thing that there's a car in this segment that still has a V8 because similar cars from BMW and Audi and Mercedes, none of them have V8s. And even if they did have V8s, they'd be turbocharged. This one is naturally aspirated. It's old school, it's fabulous. And I'm excited to take you all out on the road in this car. Now I said earlier, this is an ideal situation for this car. And I think that the whole, oh, what would my, my high school English teacher say ethos of Lexus is that these cars are meant to be driven. I mean, you see Lexuses with two, three, 400,000 miles on them. They're meant to be cozy highway cruisers. And uh, this thing is shaping up to be just like that. I've been driving it now for about a day and a half and it is quite cozy. And uh, well, even though it has this nearly 500 horsepower V8. It's quite soft and reserved, and uh, that might not be for everybody, but I do quite like it. Now, let's take a look at some of our road trip essentials. Here is our trunk space. I don't have a lot with me. I'm doing just a day trip, so I've got two backpacks and my helmet, of course, because we have to get this POV angle. Now, when I'm out there, I'm going to be driving LC500s and RCF tracks, I think. Maybe IS500s as well. I don't know or really care, I'm just excited to drive on track. But you guys will all see that video on the Topher channel. That will not be here on Topher Drives. I'll be fulfilling my substitute Topher position over on uh, his channel. So if you wanna see me actually drive on track, you can look for that. But this is the real world impressions here of this IS500. You know what I love about Lexus is they always give you a little handle here for the trunk to pull it down and it always just works very well. Now I've got a bit of a personal connection with the Lexus IS. I own one. I have a first generation 2003 with a five speed manual and I actually drove that car all through college. So I've spent a lot of time on Michigan interstates in Lexus ISs. So this shouldn't feel too abnormal for me to be road tripping one of these again. Backseat space isn't the best, but this car's a little bit smaller than some of its competition. And honestly, if you want a car for big back seats, you're not really looking at a Lexus IS, at least in my mind. When I had my IS, I rarely ever used the back seat. I mean, I could probably count on two or three hands the amount of time that I've actually used it. Mostly, I used it to just put stuff in. A lot of the times, having a back seat in a car like this, or four doors, I should say, uh, is convenient for just kind of throwing stuff in, taking it out, whatever. But uh, it is usable for passengers. I'm five foot 11, sat, by, sat behind myself. I still have room. Before we hop in and start it up, let's take a look under the hood at this naturally aspirated five liter V8. So pretty. Lexus always does such a good job with their engine presentations, especially on V8 cars. You can see our big F Sport badge. A lot of the F cars get some blue on the intake manifold, which looks excellent. But since this isn't a full F, we have to settle with just silver. But I think it looks nice still, and it fits so nicely in here. God, when this car came out last year, I was just over the moon excited to get my hands on one. And I have driven one before, but not in a while. 
So I'm excited to spend a week with this thing and see what it's really like to live with. But anyways, let's get out of this parking lot, let's get on the road, and uh, let's make some noise in the IS500. Now before I give you some revs, we are in a church parking lot and I don't want them to hate me. So let's get the navigation going and uh, we'll blip the throttle a couple times, let you hear it, and then we'll get out on the road. Two hours and 14 minutes, 154 miles to my destination. That's about exactly what I used to drive up to school in my old Lexus IS300. Super free revving engine revs up fast. And what I love about this is you don't even really hear it under 2000 RPM. And once you get to about 27, 2800 RPM, it opens up something uh, induction wise. It's, I, don't think, I don't think the exhaust is valved at all. And I should probably know what I'm telling you right now, but it's some sort of thing to do with timing and flaps opening. And it sounds excellent right when you hit about 3000 RPM. And let's put this up so you all can see the cluster. What I really appreciate about Lexus is they've gone all these years and kept true to their formula, unlike a lot of enthusiast companies that haven't. And not saying that Lexus is an enthusiast company per se in the way of building pure enthusiast sports cars. Oh, I'm going right, okay, already going the wrong way. Um, but they've kept true to their brand and they've, they've kept this soft, just reliable, drive a million miles anywhere, car and um i really really like that oh this is taking me an interesting way all right we're gonna rock with it oh and you know what right off the bat here yeah we got it we're gonna make some noise because this v8 we're gonna put the windows down for you here so you can hear it <laughs> it howls it's a big naturally aspirated motor and you don't get that a lot anymore Nobody really does it. Ford will do it for you still in a car, in the Mustang, but Chevy is going away, Dodge is going away, so pretty soon this will be one of your only choices. And I like what Lexus does with a V8. This isn't as characteristic as, I'm struggling with my words a little bit today, you don't get as much pizzazz from this iteration of the 5 liter V8 as you do in the LC500. This car's a bit more quiet and reserved. Made it to our 5 liter V8, we have an 8 speed automatic transmission. Similar sort of story. The 10 speed in the LC500 snaps off gear changes and is really, really exciting to drive. This is really only exciting if you are at the limit. If you're shifting at 7200 RPM, it'll bang off shifts, but otherwise, it's a little bit of a slush box. But, I mean, for driving around town, it's completely fine. And what I found with this IS500 over the past couple of days is that you really have to either drive it flat out or like a grandma, because it doesn't really like in between. All right, let's hit it from this stop sign in normal mode. Struggling for traction a little bit there, and I heard my helmet go flying, so that'll just be flopping around in the trunk for the rest of the drive, should have been stuck in the back seat, but oh well. Um, what I should also do while I'm thinking of it is reset our gas mileage so I can see what sort of highway fuel economy this thing gets because that is important for road tripping. I'm trying to get down some sort of a formula with these road trip videos because I have been driving many places lately. We did the road trip, ooh, that's a Marauder, I think. Nope, just Marauder wheels. Got excited for no reason. We've been doing some of these road trip videos lately. We did the M4 CSL and we also did the Toyota Supra six-speed manual. And I'm going to be doing a road trip next week. I'm going to be headed down to Peoria to see my good buddy, Sean. Uh, but I don't know what I'm going to be driving yet, so I don't know if it's going to be something worth filming or not. But if it is, I will certainly film it for you all. Okay, let's see what I can get with the screen. Can I get... Oh, yes, here we go. Okay. Let's reset our gas mileage right now. It looks like over the past couple days I've been doing 18.8, .8, but I have been flogging this thing. So we'll be nice to it. Maybe not on the entrance ramp, but we'll be mostly nice to it here for the rest of our trip. Um, and see how efficient this thing can be. <sighs> but it is really a nice place to be. I love driving Lexus's long distances. The seats are just like pillows. The actual leather itself 
is so soft. You can just pet it and it's just such a smooth material. Lexus is kind of like the gold standard for interior materials. And you'll hear over bumps, there's no real creaks or rattles in here. Everything's put together well. I mean, shoot, my 2003 IS300, you can go down the road and the interior doesn't rattle. So pretty high mark for Lexus dependability. See, this is like full throttle right now in normal mode. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty lazy setting. You could actually even go one further and go to eco mode, which we might actually do on the highway. I don't know, I'm gonna stay in normal for now. You just don't get the sense that the IS500 is ever really in a hurry unless you're in Sport S Plus and giving it full throttle. Which I mean, honestly, in turn, makes it a nice split personality car in the way that a businessman could definitely own this and not be obnoxious and irritating to other people around him. Because a lot of the times I find with M cars and other sort of high performancey things from other European manufacturers, they're always just beating the crap out of you, even when you're in comfort mode or eco mode or whatever. This isn't like that. This is much, much better in the way of comfort, but it is a Lexus, so that is what it should be doing. And it's nice that we have options like this. If you are a dentist, you don't have to have an M3. You can have one of these. Although I suppose this would kind of compete more so with an M340i. Price-wise, this thing comes in about $66,000. And wow, that is a large piece of farm equipment. We're going to try not to hit that. Good. Uh, yeah, so this comes in about $66,000, similar to that of an M340i, C43 AMG, uh, Audi S4, I guess that would be. So this video will mainly just be a road trip impression of the IS500. I've already given you some basics here on the car. We're going to merge onto the highway here in about two and a half miles. We'll give you some initial highway impressions and then I will meet back up with you towards the end of my drive, tell you what this thing has been like on the highway cruising speed, how the sound system is, different things like that that matter on the highway. And then uh, we'll give some closing thoughts at the end, but I have a feeling that I'm going to have a really good cozy trip here in the IS500. Okay, let's get merged onto the highway here. Plenty of power and torque to bring you up to speed. We do, of course, have paddle shifters on this car. We react pretty quickly at the limit, but... All right, that wasn't too kind to our gas mileage, but giving sort of real-world figures, you're going to have a couple of those in your trip, so we'll just work those into the equation. Okay, let's go ahead and get our cruise control set, which this is something that I've been excited to talk about. This is going to make me sound weird. Um, this has like the same sort of cruise control as my IS300. It's the same way. You've got this little detachment from the steering wheel. It's this little stalk that sticks off the bottom right hand side and you simply click it, push down to set, and that's it. And you adjust by pressing up or down. So I'm going to set it there to 79, allegedly. And otherwise in this newer car of course we have adaptive cruise control and we have lane tracing assist so we can adjust that on our steering wheel as well with this little quadrant of buttons on the bottom right right above our little stock so I'm gonna set this on the closest setting for following don't worry it's still plenty far it does a good job and we can turn on lane tracing uh, or sorry steering assist who does lane trace oh no lane tracing LTA I think that's lane tracing or I'm getting my cars mixed up but uh, steering assist is on. I'm not the biggest fan of it in these. It doesn't feel like it's completely finished. Um, so we'll see how long I can deal with having that on, but we'll leave it on for the time being. Additionally, other amenities in this car. The IS is getting a little bit dated. We got kind of a mid-cycle refresh a couple of years ago, 2021, I wanna say. But a lot of this stuff has stayed the same, and I'm not 
even for a second saying that it's bad, it just feels a little bit dated. But that's on brand for Lexus. Lexus is never early to anything. They take their time. They make sure things are refined. They make sure things work properly before they bring them to market. So in turn, in a 2023 car, I still have a clock here on the dash. I still have many physical climate controls. I still have a volume knob. I still have a CD player down here to listen to your favorite Paul McCartney while you are on your road trip. But that's good news because we have Mark Levinson, or Phil Collins more. I guess maybe Phil Collins would be more appropriate because this is a little bit of a spirited car. Uh, what else do we have in here? Heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel. We have a touchpad. So this is a little bit updated from the old mouse that you used to get that we first saw in, I think, the Lexus LFA, somewhere around that era. But they've switched it now to a touchpad. Well, when I say now, I mean they did a few years ago. The newer cars just have a big integrated screen, which I'm sure we'll see in the next IS. But I kind of like this kind of retro fashion here with the little mouse pad here in the IS500. And it works okay for what you need. The best part about it is you don't have to use the mouse pad if you don't want because this is a full touch screen. So you can use it either way, which is nice. I like when you get multiple options for things. Makes it nice and easy. Uh, otherwise, I guess that's really it. A lot of people complain about this infotainment. I guess there are some things that aren't really the best about it. If you want to get to any menu functions, everything's a couple of clicks away. But having this physical climate control panel in here saves this car. It's not like the LC500 where everything is in the infotainment. Um, which actually that's being fixed for the 24 model year. So that's now irrelevant to even bring up. So everything in here works pretty much just like it should floating down the highway. I'll give you a second to observe NVH. Not bad. Having 19-inch wheels instead of 20s or 21s certainly helps. It's pretty quiet, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and settle in here for a trip. The sun's going down. We're going to have some nice golden hour action here. Try and get in the sun solid here for a good thumbnail. All right, well, I'm gonna turn up the Mark Levinson and I'll let you all know how it is to float down the freeway in the IS500. about 50 miles to go here on the trip and look at that sunset I hope that shows up on the 4k 30 that I'm filming in right now but uh, it looks excellent in the rear view mirror in fact all three of the rear view mirrors uh, but otherwise it's been a good trip pretty much as expected we're getting 28.2 mpg right now and that's probably averaging about 72 because uh, there was a period where I was going about 78 79 but then I slowed down to like 65 so Somewhere in the middle there, now we're cruising at 73. It's also important to note, at highway speeds at 73, we are revved right at 2,000 RPM. So this five liter V8 is in quiet mode. It is silent. You cannot hear it at all lumping around at 2,000 RPM. Uh, the only thing I want to note, I think there's only one thing I want to note. I got a little bit fatigued from this seat, which I'm a little surprised about, but it does have lumbar. So I put that all the way out and I'm feeling a bit better. Oh, the other thing is I feel a little cramped in with the dashboard being like this, having this aggressive of a downward angle and kind of this big center stack. My right leg is a little bit uncomfortable, I guess. So not 100% as cozy as I was hoping for it to be, but overall, it's still a nice, comfortable experience here. I also want to say 28.2 seems pretty dang good for a sports sedan with a 5 liter V8, but on the flip side, a BMW M340i would be getting close to 40 mpg right now. It'd be getting probably 10 mpg better than this car. So just something to consider. That car offers a lot of different things. It's a 
pretty different vibe, but it is kind of a competitor to this car, so definitely worth noting. Uh, the adaptive cruise, though, works quite well. It isn't nervous like some of these systems are. It just kind of lazily goes back and forth. No slamming on the brakes uh, in between lanes or anything like that, like a Hyundai would do. So this does a pretty good job. Hopefully you have enjoyed the time lapse, although now it's just grayness because the sun sets behind us, and I really hope you guys can see that because, uh, man, I just I love doing road trips during sunset. It makes me so happy. Just being able to go out on the open road, have my sound system, and uh, just watch Golden Hour. And speaking of that sound system, the Mark Levinson in this car does a great job. I think Charlie from Daily Motor, he'd probably give it an A. Um, not quite S tier, but it's powerful, it's crispy, and it gets the job done, and I've really been enjoying it. I don't know how I wanna end this video. We may end it tomorrow, actually, with some final thoughts uh, after the school, once I'm very fatigued. We'll see how I feel getting back behind the wheel of the IS500. But as for now, day one, we're feeling good. I've got my lumbar out. It just makes me feel old every time I get fatigued in a car after 100 miles. I'm like, man, I used to just drive so far in my Chevy Cobalt SS with rocks for seats. And yeah, but cool. I'm gonna wrap up this last little bit of the drive. And I don't know if I'll talk to you tonight or tomorrow, but it'll be coming in just a couple of seconds. So enjoy future me. And as I'm sure you can tell from the loudness of the roads, I am back in Michigan. It is the second day of my 300 mile excursion in the Lexus IS 500. I just spent all day at the Lexus Performance Driving School. And if you wanna see the footage from that, head over to the Topher channel. All of my driving will be on that channel and I don't know when that'll go live, but hopefully it'll be live around the same time that this video is. So go over to the Topher, check all that out, but I'll throw a little bit in right now as a bit of a sneak peek for you. <laughs> yeah, so that was an absolute blast and uh, I'm super happy to be back in the IS500 coming up on my last 20 miles uh, again of this 300 mile road trip that I've done in this car. And honestly, impressions haven't really changed uh, from when I last left off when I had just, uh, well, I guess it wasn't when I had just entered Ohio, it was when I was towards the end of my trip. I was a little fatigued, whatever, you know, I'm a little bit cramped in here. All of that has pretty much stayed the same. Uh, but what I wanna add, and I hate that I'm adding another negative thing, I've been having this issue with Lexus ISs, and it's been in multiple cars, so I know it's not just this one. Uh, I've been having an issue with the wired car play, and it's a very strange issue. It's an issue I haven't had in any other car. When you first start up the car, you open Spotify and you start playing your music, you get this weird like popping noise. And it doesn't stay forever. It's for the first couple of songs, you get these weird like pops, like audio clicks almost. And the first couple of times it happened in the last IS I was driving, I kept unplugging and plugging in my phone and you know, resyncing my phone and whatever else. And uh, the problem continued. And now I feel validated that it isn't me, it's not my cord, it's not my phone. It's something to do with this Lexus IS infotainment, so I don't know. Uh, the good thing about it is the problem solves itself. Once you get to song three or four of the day, the problem just goes away. So I don't really know what that's about. Uh, comment below if you've had that issue, if you own a 22 and up IS. I'm just curious um, if you have had that problem. Otherwise though, I mean, Lexus Performance Driving School was a blast. We got to autocross some IS 500s, that was a lot of fun. But overall road trip impressions of this car, it is quite nice. It didn't fully live up to my expectations and I often find when I go in with really high hopes, the car often doesn't live up to it. And I think the reason I had such high expectations is because the last car that I road tripped was a BMW M4 CSL. So fully, you know, like track car, carbon seats, everything like that. So I was like, oh, this car is just gonna be a couch. And in some ways it is, you know, I said the seats, very soft leather nice overall interior, but it is a little small in here. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're comparing it to the competition. 
Um, gas mileage has dropped a little bit. I've been going a little bit faster on my way home, admittedly. So we're down to about 26.5. But there was also some idling and some city driving in there. So I have not reset this at all. So over the whole, just about 300 miles, we've been getting 26.5 mpg. The sound system's still great. The cluster still moves over to the side when you push this button. And uh, I'm still a big fan of the Lexus IS overall. And I would have one of these cars. I like the IS 500. I like what it stands for. And uh, I'm looking forward to future Lexus models. And uh, hopefully LFA replacement. That's supposed to be coming soon. But I don't want to get too carried away. Let's go ahead and wrap this video up. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, comment down below what you think of the IS 500. Would you have one? Do you think my road trip impressions are accurate? But I guess you weren't on the road trip I was, so I, I guess they've, they've, they've got to be accurate. But anyways, um, that'll wrap it up for us today. Uh, thank you all again so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. You can hear me over these Michigan roads, but uh, take care, everyone.